slap a street legal motorized bike kit on this 20 inch BMX and rip. So you can get these little kits anywhere. Um, they're pretty much all just different versions of each other, ranging from $100 to up to $300 with options such as electric start, four strokes, bigger bores, etc. Usually when people make these uh, motorized bikes, they put it on uh, a larger mountain bike or a beach cruiser frame, a uh, 24 or 26 inch tire. But I wanted to do wheelies, and I wanted to do a lot of them while going fast. So the best way to do that is pack everything I can into this light BMX. I got all of this for 136 bucks from Monster Scooter Parts. Oh my god! More boxes. First thing we gotta do, mount this sprocket. Take the hardware that comes with it, these weird old like tire rubber pads and a few nuts and bolts. All right, so you can grab a 10 millimeter or three eighths inch bit. Once you have this cut, feed it in through the spokes, pull it apart a tiny bit, and it should hook up right there. Take the other one, and then lay the sprocket on. I'm gonna have it with this little flange facing out. And start feeding the bolts through. You can use the little uh, split lock washers, but it's up to you. Once you have all of the bolts in, take this little metal piece, line it up with the holes. In order to make sure the sprocket is straight, when you're tightening all these down, you have to go in a pattern. So do one, do the one across from it, and just kind of go all around. Each time, just tighten them a little bit. Once you have everything thoroughly tightened, you can put it back on the bike. Somehow, we have to figure out how to make all of this fit. I'm gonna cut right there, cut right there, um, see if it'll fit. Hopefully we don't have to do welding. I'm pretty sure this bottom down tube will be strong enough to hold everything together. Please, please, is that not wide enough? It and found this little adapter plate. Basically what this will do is make it available for me to put this U-bolt just right there. In most cases, your engine will actually come assembled, so you won't have to go through this step. But, just in case it's not, I'll show you how to put everything on. Take a 10 mil wrench or just take them off by hand and remove the head nuts. Pull the piston up. You can see the little baby piston right there. Just pop that out to about there. Remove those pins with a pair of pliers. This is the air intake. You're gonna wanna have it facing towards your seat. I raised my seat a few inches just to make sure it fits. Slide the wrist pin out. Slide it down there, make sure everything lines up. You can just fit the connecting rod in. 
You gotta fit this little thing right in there. Push it in as far as it'll go and it should, you should hear a little audible click. And now you can slide that down. Take your metal head gasket, slap it on there, put the head on. So there should be one of these little washers, followed by a black one on each and every one of those. When working on engines, a lot of specific pieces, such as the head, have to be tightened to a specific torque spec. Torque is measured in foot-pounds, inch-pounds. You can get these exact measurements by just picking up a torque wrench from Harbor Freight for like 20 bucks. Install the carburetor. Just to make sure everything lines up, I'm gonna mount the chain. As you can see, I have a little chain tensioner mocked up. This is the general idea. Remove the little Phillips head bolt. And with a fat, flat head screwdriver, you can loosen up the clutch a little bit because they are really tight. Come back with your clutch cover. Make sure that uh, gasket lines up. Alright, let's test it out. To disengage the clutch, just pull this lever, little lever in. I'm going to continue by hooking up the manual clutch, throttle, CDI, and spark plug. Unfortunately, due to the fact that I'm using a completely custom frame, I'm gonna have to mount the clutch. Um, basically, this piece is where the um, linkage connects up, and then the cable extends to here, and when you pull it, it pulls this in. So I might have to move something like this just up here, weld it really quick, and then run the clutch line to there. I put the clutch lever right next to the throttle. I don't know how well this system's gonna work, but it'll be fine. Tune up your clutch. All you have to do is grab a pair of pliers and a Phillips head screwdriver. And pull the wire as you tighten. When you pull it in, you should be able to turn the back wheel. So obviously mine is not yet. I figured out why um, it was being annoying. Because we had a custom mount, this spring should be about half the length that it is, so I'm just going to take some tin snips and cut it just like that to about an inch and a half to an inch. To finish up your wiring, connect up blue to blue, black to black, and then take your copper kill switch leads, push those in there, oh they don't seem to fit, that's nice. If you have this problem, just clamp them down with pliers and you should be good. It's looking great so far. Now we just gotta figure out how we're gonna hook up the fuel line with the engine being the same height as the tank. Now that we have the gas tank on for the most part, let's run the fuel line and tighten Over the past 24 hours, I've done a lot, including bend the frame. So I put this absolutely massive piece of angle iron in there, put in some more um, bracing all down there, and now it does ish tiny little wheelies. At least now it doesn't need a kickstand. I think I'm just going to paint the frame. Stars.
Podcast.com. Before your first test run, there are a few things you need to make sure of. First of all, this gas tank is pretty secure. Make sure that you can't easily turn it at all. Make sure this is tight so there's no fuel leaking onto the engine. In order to make sure fuel is flowing, make sure your valve is parallel with the fuel line. Make sure your fuel line is not contacting any part of the engine whatsoever as it can heat up and if it's not the right kind, it can melt or if it's the cheap stuff they send in the kit. Always make sure your clutch works. When I was showing it in the video, I did it slightly differently than I did it here just because I wanted to get a better view of it. But you should never have your wiring contacting the exhaust as this gets really hot. Come on! Come on! Ah! I really hope I got that footage. This thing's awesome. If you want to have a little bit of legal fun. Um, definitely not as fast as the mini bike. Definitely not as powerful as the mini bike. Definitely doesn't sound as good as the mini bike. Um, but it's fun. And the fact that it's on a BMX frame makes it so maneuverable. And I've been riding BMX for a really long time. So I can literally, uh, like, it, it's light enough where I can hop it. I can jump off curves. I can jump down other stuff. And it's powerful enough to barely make it up a hill. Barely. Um, now, this obviously can be changed with some modifications, such as a nicer exhaust, um, a ported and polished cylinder, and I want to change the rear sprocket size. It has a 44 on it right now, and it hits a top speed of about 20 miles an hour, I believe. 
We'll do a good test run. I'll show it off, but I've been riding this thing over the past couple of days just to make sure it doesn't blow up on camera. So. Uh, okay. 